So the uh, Pythagorean theorem uh, is used for right triangles and right triangles only. And uh, what it allows us to do is kind of relate the different sides of a right triangle. All right. And when we talk about a triangle, we'll talk about the sides in terms of the legs and the hypotenuse. The legs are the two sides that make the right angle, that kind of make this thing a right triangle. And the hypotenuse is always the one across from the right angle, all right? So in this uh, particular example right here, the hypotenuse is C because it's across from the right angle. It will always be the largest side because it's across from the largest angle, all right? And then the legs are these other guys, that's A and B. All right? And really, when we do our Pythagorean theorem, the only one that matters that has to be in the right spot for the Pythagorean theorem is the hypotenuse. And so we read it as this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But really, it just means leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And the legs, once again, are interchangeable. It doesn't matter which one is a and which one is b. The only thing that matters is that the hypotenuse is the thing that's by itself. Okay? So leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. All right? And so when we look at something like this guy, it says find the, the length of the missing side. And uh, we can call it whatever we want, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever, X, okay? Uh, most students, because this is the hypotenuse that we're looking for, they prefer to call it C, and that's okay. You can call it C. And so from here, I do leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So when I look at this, here's a leg and here's a leg. So I do 2 squared plus... The next leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared, and this time the hypotenuse is C, so I do C squared. And so I have to solve this algebraically, and so I simplify a little bit. That's a 4 and a 9. I add those together. That gives me a 13. And now to solve when I have something squared is I take the square root, all right? And uh, I'll end up doing this on my calculator, but I take the square root to get rid of squaring something. I do the same thing to the other side, okay? And so what happens here, I have C equals, I'm just going to plug this into the calculator, the square root of 13. And it gives me about a 3.6. That's it. So the missing side is 3.6. And one of the quick things we want to check, is that the longest side? And the answer is yes. And it should be the longest side because it's across from the biggest angle, all right? If I look at the next one, same kind of thing. I'm missing the hypotenuse, so I'll call it C again. And now I just do leg squared plus leg squared equals C squared equals hypotenuse squared. And uh, what, what helps students a lot of times is just remember, put this in uh, uh, ascending order. Start with the smallest one, 7 squared plus 11 squared equals what I know will be the biggest one, which is C squared. Okay? The hypotenuse squared. And it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, smallest to biggest, but it's just an easy way to kind of keep things straight in our heads. All right? And so now I simplify this algebraically. That's a 49 plus a 121. Um, I combine the like terms here. That gives me a 170. And now to solve this, whenever I solve with squares, I take the square root. And so here I end up with, let's see, that's a C. Once again, I just plug it into my calculator, the squared of 170. I hit the buttons, and it comes out to be 13.03, uh, or sorry, 0 0.04. And once again, I can tell that that is the longest side like it's supposed to be. So it's a quick, uh, quickly check and make sure we're on the right track, okay?